Our good friend George decides to enjoy the wonders of Loch Ness by rowboat. And as he's traveling and enjoying the beautiful sunny day, he notices an odd shape emerge from the water. The Loch Ness monster has spotted him and decided that he looks quite tasty and is now charging after him quite quickly. We need to see whether George, our friend here, can outrun the, ma the monster or whether it's going to become lunch. So we need to know a little bit about George and how he can travel on the water here before we can determine this. First up, since this is not George's first trip on Loch Ness, that he's been rowing here for a few days, he knows that in still water, he manages in his rowboat 10 miles per hour. So this means when the current is neither helping him nor hurting him. He gets the boat to go 10 miles per hour. With the current, his rate will be faster because the current is going to be pushing him along. Now he doesn't know the exact rate of the current, but he knows with the current he can travel 15 miles in the same amount of time it would take him to travel 9 miles against the current when it's pushing against him, so slowing him down. So that was 9 miles. And remember, these take the same amount of time. Now, a little bit more information to help us out. First of all, George and the monster are both moving with the current. And recent studies have shown that the top speed for the Loch Ness monster is going to be 12 miles per hour with the current. So we need to see whether George is actually traveling faster than that or not. So let me pan up here so we have a little bit of room and set this up to see if we can determine poor George's fate. So to help us do this and to set up the equation, what I recommend you do is to set up a table. We're going to have two different things to consider here. Traveling with the current and against the current. As I said, a table will help you organize all of your information and help you figure out an equation for this. Now we're going to need three pieces of information, two of which have been given for us for both the current and against the current, or with the current and against the current. The third one we're going to have to calculate for ourselves. First off, we have the distance that can be traveled. Now we know that with the current, George is traveling 15 miles, the same amount of time it was taking him to travel 9 miles when the current's pushing against him. Next up, the speed or rate at which he's traveling. Now we don't know this exactly, in fact this is what we want to end up figuring out, but we know what we're starting with which is the rate of the boat in still water, since that's what George can do just on his own. So for both of these, we're starting with a figure of 10. Now if we let C be the rate of the current, we know that that's either pushing with the boat or against the boat, depending on which way he's going. With the current, the current's pushing him faster, so though he's going 10 miles an hour just by the boat's power, He's going to be adding that current to him, pushing him that much faster. Against the current, this is when it's pushing against him. So though he's managing 10 miles per hour on his own, he's getting pushed back that rate for the current. So with the current, it will be 10 plus C. Against the current, 10 minus C. Now the last thing we need here, and I've run out of a bit of room, so let me pan over one more time here, get a bit more room on the screen. 
The last thing that we need here is the time, because we know that he can do both of these distances in the same time. We're going to need this part, and we're going to use a formula to help us figure this out. That's a basic rate formula that tells us that time, t, is going to be equal to distance divided by rate. So the time that he's traveling these 15 miles with the current gives us the expression 15, his distance divided by the rate 10 plus c. Against the current, he's going 9 miles with a rate of 10 minus c. Since these two times are the same, it takes him the same amount of time to travel the 15 miles with the current as 9 miles against the current. If we set these two things equal to each other, we're going to have an equation that we can solve to find c. If we know what the rate of the current is, we know what George's overall rate is, and we can compare that to our Loch Ness Monster. So room one more time, let me move this up and set up our equation. So we have here that 15 over 10 plus C is equal to 9 over 10 minus C. And this is a rational equation. We have two rational expressions set equal to each other. But you notice here we have a really nice form for this. We have one rational here, or one fraction, equal to another rational here, or another fraction. And when you have this setup of fraction equals fraction, you can go ahead and cross multiply in order to solve. Which means we're going to take the top of this one times the bottom here, and set that equal to the top of this one times the bottom down here. That gives us 15 times 10 minus c, and we're setting that equal to 9 times 10 plus c. So in that one step, we manage to eliminate the rational equation, and we have a linear equation to solve instead. This we solve just like any other linear equation. First off, let's distribute these to get rid of the parentheses. So we're going to have 150 minus 15c equal to 90 plus 9c. To solve this, we want all of the variables on one side, the constants on the other. So I'm going to go ahead and add 15c to both sides. And I'm going to subtract 90 from both sides. Simplifying this out and combining the like terms, I'm going to end up with the equation 60 is equal to 24c. Now to solve this, all I have to do is divide both sides by 24. And when we simplify, we end up ultimately with c equal to 2.5. So what does this mean for us, and perhaps more importantly, what does this mean for George? Well, let's move this back up so that we can see. For our friend George here, what this tells us is that his speed, since he's traveling with the current, is going to be the boat speed of 10 miles per hour plus the current speed, which we just found, was 12.5. So his overall speed is 12.5 miles per hour. And since the maximum speed for Nessie here is 12 miles per hour, it looks like George is just in the clear. So instead of being lunch, he'll hopefully make it back to his hotel safely with some wonderful pictures to share with us when he gets home.